Dr. Jesse Sanders, owner and chief veterinarian of Aquatic Veterinary Services. Today we will be talking about the usages of salt in freshwater fish, fish systems. So this includes both tanks and ponds. Now, most freshwater fish systems don't have any salt in them, and they really don't have to have salt in them. Um, at very low levels, we're talking 1 to 1.5 parts per thousand. Um, there is a little bit of improved osmoregulation. So if you go look at our dropsy video, um, when we have a fish in a freshwater environment, again, the environment has a lot of water and the fish body has less water, so water is going to move from the environment into the fish. Now you put salt in the environment and it's going to raise the, the osmolality and not as much water is going to go into the fish. So it gives the gills and kidneys a little bit of a break, which, you know, some fish having health issues always recommended for post-surgery or, you know, a fish that is currently trying to heal from an ulcer or something else that's kind of penetrating into their skin, uh, usually recommended because it will help you know, just alleviate the stress on the kidneys and gills. Uh, but Again, trying to maintain that very low level. For some people, it's a little bit tricky, especially if, you know, with your regular water changes. You have to know how much water is coming out so you know how much salt to put back in. Now, that's another good point before I forget, is if you're adding salt on a regular basis, you have to take water out. Are your salinity is going to go up, 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 up? Now, if you're pushing, you know, 10 parts per thousand, which is where my meter tops off, uh, obviously your fish is going to be having a hard time breathing. So please make sure that if you're adding salt, you're doing your regular water changes. If you are adding salt per the box of salt that says by volume, why are you even adding salt? Uh, you need to add salt by weight. You need to actually physically weigh out your salt in order to have any sort of impact on your fish's environment. Uh, doing a teaspoon whatever the heck that means. Um, obviously, it's going to vary the type of salt you're using, how it's processed, and how it was packed, and your environment. So please, weigh your salt. I, I, it, the little scales, they cost five, ten dollars, but please weigh your salt. It's going to make things so much easier. Now, if you never use salt and you maybe have a funky shaped pond or a tank that has lots of decor in it, salt will actually help you determine the volume of your pond. So you're going to need a salt meter. Uh, we're going to put a link to just a cheap one. It's the same one I use. Um, it's an affiliate link, so I'll get maybe 10 cents if you buy it. Um, essentially, you're going to take your salinity meter before you add any salt. And then you add a known weight of salt, weight. And then you take your salinity again. Now we're going to put another link in here is you take this salinity and this salinity plus the amount of salt that you know you added, you will be able to determine the volume of your pond. And this is great information for any owner to have, especially if there are leaks, you need to do other treatments. Um, adding salt, you know, just to do that quick, it can just be, you know, a tiny, tiny little amount, enough at least <laughs> to make your meter move a little bit. Um, and at that level, having that measurement is really, really great. Now, we also use salt therapeutically, and this is a lot of the time to treat parasites. So parasites, we have our whole series on that. Um, little, little, tiny guys, you add a little bit of salt and they shrivel. So it's a very effective and very safe treatment for fish. It's the one that we recommend more than anything else. And the only issue with that is you have to kind of get it into the therapeutic window. So it has to be within a certain percent level to actually have an effect on these parasites. Now, if the fish and their parasites have seen salt before, you know, at a kind of lower level, it can push the resistance a little bit higher. You know, those parasites, they get okay with a little bit of salt. And, you know, you push it up a little higher, you might need a little bit more to actually have an impact on those parasites. So just something to keep in mind if you've just always added salt. Sure, why not? Again, low levels, not really going to make a difference. Um, maybe a little bit osmoregulation, but... Not, not any great studies that have kind of proven that in multiple species. We have it in a few, not a ton. Um, but again, you can use salt therapeutically for parasites. We can use it for ulcers, penetrating ulcers, for surgery patients, fish with fungus. Um, saltwater fish 
don't really have any funguses because they have salt. So you add a little bit of salt, makes it a little bit better. First of all, you shouldn't have funguses to begin with. We'll do another video on that. Um, other thing, salt can also be an algae treatment. So plants don't like salt. If you have plants in your pond, you're going to do a salt treatment. Keep in mind, you're probably going to see a little bit of loss. Um, and it can happen, you know, further down the line after that treatment's already commenced because the salt just builds up in the plants. So, you know, this is why you work with a veterinarian because they'll be like, okay, we have this disease or this parasite. If we go with this treatment, it'll, you know, be the best overall. If you can't use salt because you have plants or other things in there, fine. We'll go to another parasite medication, a parasite S, and work our way down the line. And this is really what you get, you know, working with a competent aquatic veterinarian. So, salt, fine. Low levels, 1 to 1.5 parts per thousand. Please weigh it. Do not use a teaspoon. Um, doesn't tell me anything. <laughs> as fun as fun as that is. Um, good for parasites, good for fungus, good for, you know, fish recovering from some sort of traumatic injury. Again, we're looking to increase the osmolality of the water so their kidneys and gills don't have to do as much work. So, that is the quick and dirty about salt in freshwater fish systems. If you have any other specific questions, you're welcome to comment. I'll do my best to get to everyone on there. If you have any other questions about fish or fish health, please visit our website at cafishvet.com. At Aquatic Veterinary Services, fish are treated like family.